is Golang space sensitive? Yes, it is. At some places, it can be really, really space sensitive, and it's really tough to find out where it is. Hey there, everyone. Hitesh here, and welcome to the Golang series. In case you don't know, we are putting up a Golang series, so in case you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and please do that. In this video, we are going to talk about the conditionals and how Golang can be space sensitive at some of these points, which are pretty much hard to find out. So let's go ahead and write some code and try to understand because it's easier to understand there. So first and foremost, we are going to have a package. Let's call it as simply main. We are going to go ahead and import uh, the regular guys like FMT. We don't need much other of the packages, but we'll see about that. Then we're going to have a simple main function and we got its definition. So, so far everything is good. And I've created this new uh, file here, which is 03 conditionals.go. I'll link that in the description if you want to download all of these files. Okay, moving forward. So let's just say we declare a variable. We call it as simply is logged in. That is of type Boolean and is going to hold a value of true as of now. Okay, so what we can do here, let's just say we want to render some of these web pages or component based on this is logged in. So we surely can do that. We can simply go ahead and use a if else syntax. I know you have seen this many time. And if we just go ahead and simply say if uh, the condition goes all right, uh, then we want to show some pages here. So I'm going to simply say, uh, just want to print a line as of now, which is going to be show cart page. Let's just assume there is a page there. So, so far there is nothing fancy in here. And if I just run this, go run and the file name, it shows me the cart page. Let's just assume for a moment. But what can happen is maybe you want to show some something else as well. Probably if the user is not, not logged in, I want to show him another page. So I'm going to simply say show user uh, login page, something like that. Now, as I just save this, there is no problem, but this is going to give us an error. And the error is pretty sneaky here. It's a little bit difficult to find. If I run this one, it says, hey, there is something wrong. And you might have coded in various other languages. You know this syntax is absolutely correct. There is no problem in that. Now, where you got off guarded here is the syntax that uh, the lexer inside the Go language is pretty sneaky. And it wants this else to be on the same line as you are closing this if syntax. I told you, it's a bit tricky here. So when I save this one here and I run this program again, then it always goes nice and easy. And even I can change the value from true to false. And we can see that the both conditional blocks are running absolutely fine. Okay, moving back and I want to turn this one as true. Uh, let's go up here. Now let's declare another variable. Uh, let's call it as simply balance. Maybe you're selling up something balance if I can type that. Now this balance is let's just say integer and is holding up a value of 10. Let's just say and you want to check out double conditions that user is logged in and he should have a balance more than five dollars and then only I want to show him cart page otherwise I want to show him either a login page or a recharge page something like that. You got the point. So definitely we can use uh, stuff here. So in case you want to use multiple conditional uh, maybe you want to use and and simply means both the condition on the end, left hand side and right hand side should be true. Then only I'll move inside the block. And we have this or as well, which says either the left hand side or maybe the right hand side condition is true. It's only required as only one should be true, either the left side or the right side. And I'll go inside the block. So that's uh, regular culprits here. So we're going to simply go ahead and say and and I would like to have a conditional check for balance if balance is actually greater than five. So if balance is greater than five, which is then we are going to show him the cart page. And of course, he is logged in as well. Now, what strangely are going to notice that if I just say balance should be greater than 15, uh, now the things are going to be different. So obviously you got the point that how these things works. It's pretty easy to understand. So show user a login page. This is what we have got because this condition was false. And if this condition, uh, both the condition becomes true, then we are going to go inside of this block here. So yeah, this is how we do it. Uh, simple and or or, and you get the point that how or actually works. We just need one condition to be true and we are going to get inside the block show cart page. So pretty nice and pretty easy. 
Another thing that you might get into this is sometimes you want that these conditions are not really readable and you want to wrap them around inside a bracket, a parenthesis, not bracket. So you want to wrap them around the parenthesis. Now, official guide of the Golang is not going to say that this is a correct format. Uh, surely there are tricks that you can wrap these up into some parentheses, but as soon as I'm gonna say, uh, save this one, the parentheses are gonna go away. So let me just save this and there you see. So according to the official documentation, you should always just go like this inside the if and else block and surely you can have multiple if and else uh, there. Now this brings us to a talk about the package which we haven't done in the past, which is fumped package. Now this fumped package is pretty detailed and you definitely want to go ahead and take a look inside that. There is so much that you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this line and now I want to store whatever this fumped is returning inside a variable. Now fumped actually returns you a couple of things and inside, and in fact, most of the things in the Golang are going to return you two things. The first is gonna be, in this case, the length and the second one is error. So that's what it returns back. Now, in case you have a uh, deal up with the database in the past, we know that whenever we actually try to interact with the database, there are high chances of getting a failure. So that's why we check out that failure first and then we move, proceed cautiously after that. Now, Golang actually wants you to proceed always with care. In fact, in the smallest thing like uh, printing out these things, actually they want you to give these good habits of proceeding with caution. And that's what exactly it is being doing. And you're gonna see a syntax uh, very similar here that once these objects are being returned, you are gonna notice that people uh, proceed something like this. If error is actually equal to nil, then only I want to do some kind of printing. So let's just say I want to do a simple printing of some stuff. Now surely we can go ahead and as of now, we can just go ahead and do a printing, uh, something like, uh, test pass, uh, something like that. I know this is very fun. So if I run this one, uh, there it says len declared, but not used. I know I need to use it somewhere. Let's just print this out. So we're gonna use the len, okay. So there we go, uh, no big deal. We're able to print out the length, but what I what else I want to show you with this fumped package is there is a little bit more to it uh, that you can deal up with, not just using the variables. For example, if I just go and say, uh, I just want to use not the print uh, ln, I want to use printf. Now what printf does, it allows you to have placeholders. For example, you can simply go ahead and simply say, uh, length is, and then you can have your placeholders with the percent v. In the Golang uh, terminology world, we call it as verb. I'll show you the official documentation in a minute, but we call it placeholders in a couple of other languages. In the Golang, we call it as verbs, and verbs can be of many types. This is just simply printing the value. Uh, there's another one like printing the type as well, so you can have a person t. Now, the number of placeholders you are going to get it, similar values you have to pass on. For example, uh, I can simply go ahead and say the first verb is length, and the second verb is also length, but it can be anything else as well. So this is gonna show us the value, this is gonna show us the type of the length. So let's just save this and run this, pretty easy, fun stuff. And we can see that this is of type integer. So yes, there are a couple of other verbs available for us, but this is the common syntax that I wanted to talk about uh, through this conditional block. So make sure you are aware of this and you're going to see this uh, quite a number of time. And again, there are two styles of writing code. Some people follow this, if error is uh, nil, then only do stuff. Uh, some people like to follow something like this, if error is not equals to nil, uh, then something like uh, handle this and then they'd like to write all of the rest of the code and probably return some things in function. So again, uh, these are just style of writing code, nothing else, uh, so that's what we are having. Now, another interesting stuff that you are going to see in here is uh, something like this. So you're going to see something, uh, sometimes that the backticks are being used, and I am a backtick. So save that, and if I run this one again, surely it's going to run, and we can see that it says I am backtick. Now notice two things here, that if I just use a simple printf, I don't get my line break or line return here, so I have to manually use that. But in case of println, I already get that, so we can run this program again, no problem, no big deal, and it says backtick. 
But uh, obviously, if you're coming up from the world of JavaScript or something, you just love backticks, you want to interpolate the strings here, probably want to insert some variables and stuff like that here. But as of now, I would say uh, it's better to go this syntax instead of using the backticks because there's a lot of discussion happening on the Go Lang about the backticks. If you are going to see that, uh, some of them are having proposal on hold, uh, the language change, proposal, bug fixes. So yes, this uh, backtick is still in the debate format yet, but I think it's not any deal breaker. We are already having so much stuff to do this stuff. So there we go. Uh, this is your basic introduction to Fumpt package and I highly recommend you to please go ahead, uh, take a look at the documentation on the official website of Golang about this Fumpt package. There's a lot of things uh, that we can go up and deal with here. Now one more thing that I want to talk about before we leave on this video. Now let's go ahead and do the error stuff means I want to move this else on the next statement. Obviously this is going to give us an error. So a couple of things that you can do here is if you run this, this is going to give you an error, which is pretty fast. But instead of running this program directly, we can go ahead and say, hey, I want to know if my formatting is all good and not. And I can simply say go FMT and I can run this program. And it also gives me all these errors and stuff like that. A uh, couple of them actually. Now, this is not really a great example of using the font. There can be a lot of places where it can be discussed in detail, but I just wanted to show you briefly that how this is going on. So there we go. Uh, we have understood now the conditional as well, and definitely we can do a lot more fun with these conditional in the upcoming videos that surely we'll be doing. But that is possible only if you hit the subscribe button on this channel. So that's it for this video, and I'm going to catch you up in the next one.